again, everybody. This is Ashley. Welcome back to another installment of Lovely Layering with Ashley. I know that you're looking at this card and thinking this has nothing to do with layers or layering, but you would be wrong. And I'm going to show you how you can create this colored image, whether you have tons of coloring experience or none at all. The way that we're going to do this is look at it through a view of looking at it as if you would layered stamps. And I know that sounds really confusing, but what we're going to do is create a base layer and then put a detail layer on top. And I'm going to show you how simple it is and how you can do that. We're going to be using this outline stamp from the Grateful Heart stamp set, but I'm showing you flower garden here because I wanted to show you the difference. You can see some of these detail lines in those petals, and that's why I opted for this Grateful Heart uh, flower instead because there is very little detail inside the petals of this flower and I wanted to show you how you can create the details with your second layer quote unquote of coloring which is going to bring all that detail in so for these colors we're using R318 R304 R302 and that darkest shade color there over to the left is R335 now these are Altenew alcohol ink markers, and I really love to use four colors when I'm coloring with them. I think that it just gives it a lot more sort of like highlights and shadows and dimension and shading. And how I do that is by starting with the second to darkest color, going down in succession of shade. And then once I'm done, I'll bring in that darkest shade to create my shadows or uh, my darkest shadows. So as you can see, I went ahead and just did a really sort of simple base here. And then I'm going back over and just making sure that that's all blended out well. I did go up quite a bit in the center and that's just to give it a little bit of uh, dimension so that it will look like it's sort of folding in in the center there. So now we're going to go in with our second layer, quote unquote, and we're going to take some colored pencils. I'm using Prismacolor, but really as long as your uh, colored pencils are sharp, they're going to look beautiful. So what I'm doing is the same thing. So I'm taking the second darkest color or the second color from the darkest, and I'm going in and blending out some of those lines. I'm also bringing in some extra dimension lines, and there's no rhyme or reason to this. Really at the top of the petal, anywhere that I see an indentation or where it's coming in, I'm just going to take this color and draw very light lines coming down from there. The trick with this second layer and these colored pencils is to build up this color. Obviously markers are a lot more intense in their colors than colored pencil. So what I'm doing now is just taking the lighter color from that second to darkest and blending that all out. And then I'll go in now with my absolute lightest color and I'm just going to completely saturate or cover the petal with this. Now this isn't going to really change much as far as dimension and highlighting goes because I'm keeping a very light hand, but it is going to change the texture of it a bit. I'm going to get a little bit of a softer look and it's going to give that look like you could reach out and touch it. Now with my very darkest shade, I am shading in where I would normally add some shadows and dimension in, but I'm also going into those lines that I've added at the very top of the petal and then in the bottom center, and I'm giving all of that a little bit more dimension. Now by just adding and building up this color, so very light lines, and then stepping back and taking a look, do I need more color or should I stop here? And then also, if you ever felt like you added a little bit too much, always feel free to go in with that lighter shade and blend it out a bit. And that will actually bring the saturation down a little bit as well. I'm going in now and I'm just going to basically outline my petal. So I'm going at the very top of the petal and kind of connecting those lines that I've created coming from the top to the center. And I think that this just gives it a little bit more of a realistic look, almost like the petal is bending away from the center of the flower, which I feel like you find a lot in nature. I'm going in now with my darkest shade again in my alcohol ink marker and bringing just a tad bit more life and dimension to those lines just to give it a little bit more movement. 
Before I let you finish watching how I colored this flower, I just wanted to add that how I chose my colored pencil shades was really just doing my best to match with my eye. It doesn't have to be exact, it just has to be, you have to have the same amount of shades, or in my opinion, it's great to have the same amount of shades. So as long as you can sort of match it with your eye and find the right shades, you'll be golden. I'll be back in just a minute after I'm done with the flower. So now I've finished coloring the flower and you can see that we're back to that original footage that I told you about before. Uh, but I'm using some yellow shades of markers to color in the center of this flower. And I know that the center of flower sometimes freaks people out, uh, but really all I do is put a light base shade in. I'm then going to take a slightly darker shade. And for yellow, I like my darker shade to be brown usually. I think that that works out pretty well. And after I do some detail uh, divots and spots and whatnot, I'm going to go in with a white gel pen. And here's a good trick that I learned from Kathy Rakusin. If you sort of draw a dot on your finger, it loosens it up and warms it up and it makes the ink flow in your gel pen a lot easier. Um, so I do that and then I'm just gonna add some dots to the center and I just think that this adds a little bit of interest. I'm not really sure if this is how it is in nature, but it's the way that I've decided I really love the center of my flower to look. So here we've got the flower itself and I repeated the same process with the leaves as well. Of course, it's a lot less space, so it took a lot less time. Um, but the way I, I really like the, these die cuts because I really like that the two leaves can sort of come together to look like it's the base of a flower that you've picked out of the ground. And I think that's beautiful. So now we're going to go into the layers that I'm adding to the card front. I'm going to use this frame from the framed stamp set, which I'm obsessed with. And I've just recently finally got my hands on it. So I'll be using it a lot. And I'm going to use the Obsidian Pigment Ink by Altenew to uh, stamp this onto a piece of white cardstock. Now I want to cut this out, so I'm just going to use my wire trimmer and that works best here because you can see exactly where you're cutting. So I'm cutting around the edges and then cutting the very center. If you go a little bit too far, don't worry about it. Uh, just try not to cut a side off completely because that would be no good. So I'm now just sort of trying to figure out how I want this flower to intertwine into this frame. This can sometimes take me the longest on a card. Sometimes I'll just leave my die cuts that I know that I want to use together and I know that they'll work, but I just can't help. I can't, I can't make it happen at the moment. Sometimes I'll just leave them on my desk, walk away, come back a little bit later. You want to be sure before adhering anything, obviously, to your card front that you love it. So I've made some terrible decisions um, and then I'm going to go in in a minute and just make some better decisions. So here is the way that we have it at the end. I'm using some glue to adhere it to the frame itself and then I'll end up using some foam tape to pop the entire thing up and give dimension on the card. I'm using the watercolor brush marker in silver stone and I'm doing this because I've decided I want it on a white card base. I really prefer white card bases. I think that it just looks nice and clean, um, but the white frame against the white card base just wasn't doing it for me. So I used this color just to make it look a little bit more like wood. And then I've also gone ahead and scored the actual card front. Uh, you can see it just a bit here on the bottom right, but that's all the way up and this also gives it just a little bit of dimension. I hope that you've enjoyed the video and learned about how you can look at coloring as a layering technique as well. As always, if you have any questions, please ask me in the comments. Also go to the description to find all of the links to the products used today. Thank you so much for stopping by and I will see you again soon. Thank you.